Hello everybody, welcome to our first video on coins. I just thought today that we would go over some of the most important coins that the US has minted from some very old coins up to more modern coins. So, let's start off with the pennies. The first type of penny that the US minted were these things called large cents. Now, large cents, this one is from 1817 as you can see, are just that, they're large cents. They are very big pennies. This is the United States of America on the back. They were minted. Oh my. They were minted from about the 1700s down to 1848. There were multiple designs. This is one of the earlier designs. Um, the older designs have more flowy hair, and the newer designs have a braided design. <clears throat> but after these were minted, we had to make the penny smaller because this. Even if I bought it, say it's seven, I, I bought this for $17. This penny is worth more, much more than a cent in copper today. Now, now the next type of penny that we minted was the 1856 through 1858 Flying Eagle Scent. Now, as you can see, it's called a Flying Eagle Scent for a very obvious reason. It has a flying eagle on it. Now, there are three years that this penny was minted, 1856, 1857, and 1858. I have both the 57 and the 58. The 1856 is actually a very rare coin, fetching up to like $2,000, like no matter the like condition. This thing is only worth like a few dollars. But I don't know why they just changed the design, but they made a new design. There were two types of these. These are called Indian head pennies. I have one from 1860 and one from 1909. Now we will get to why the 1909 year is important in a second, but let's first go over this. These pennies were minted from about 1860 to 1909. And this, the earlier ones from about 1860 to, I mean, 1859 to 1909, about 1859 to 1864, these were minted out of copper and nickel. And from the rest of the years, from 1865 to 1909, these were minted out of bronze. Now, putting this one away, this other one, we will go to this one. Now, this 1909 is actually an important year because this is the same year that we also minted not just these pennies, but other types of pennies, such as the 1909 wheat pennies. Now on their faces, they look like modern day pennies, but you flip them over, you can see they are not the modern day design that we know. Now I have three types here. There are four types of 1909, but I do not have the final one because it is a very expensive coin. First of all, we have the 1909 regular. That's what this is, just the 1909 regular penny. Then we have the 1909 VDB. And what that means is if, if you look on the back here, I actually have a very, very good condition one. There are small VDB letters written right there. It's a very small detail that is actually absent on the first 1909 we have. There. Not there. Right. Now we have a 1909 S-minted. Minted at the San Francisco Mint. Now this penny is actually worth about a hundred bucks, like eighty bucks. This penny right here, because there was only about there was barely any of those coins minted at the time. Now, next up, we have the 1943 steel cent. Most people think that these things are worth like a bazillion dollars. They're really not. They minted billions of them. This thing is worth one cent. 
In fact, the reason that we made them is because we were short on copper during World War II and we needed to make pennies out of a different metal so that we could use the copper for the war. And the reason that they stopped making them after 1943 wasn't because we had copper again, it was because people were confusing them for dimes. So, yeah. And then after that, we just have a normal 1954S. This is just um, another wheat penny, but it is a normal wheat penny of a normal year. And then after this wheat penny, we go into the memorial cents, which start at 1958. I mean, 1959, we have memorial cents, which are just your common pennies with the memorial, um, Abraham Lincoln Memorial in the back. And then starting at 19, um, 2010, we have the shield backs. And shield backs are the new ones that have the shield on the back of the penny. But that's really all there is about pennies. Let's go on to uh, nickels. Now, this is not the first year we minted a nickel, but it is the earliest nickel I own. This is called a V-nickel, and it is called a V-nickel because if you turn it on the back, there is a V. Now, fun fact, there was a much earlier variety of these nickels where there was just a V. Now, they were thinking they didn't need to put the cents because, you know, it, it said V for five, so they thought they would, so people would know it meant five. But then people were taking these coins and they were plating them in gold and passing them off as the new five dollar coin, which back in this time, five dollars in gold would have been about the size of this. Now, this is like, if this was made of gold, it would be like a few hundred bucks. So they had to add the cents on there so people would stop, conf stop plating them in gold and passing them off as gold coins so that's why that's there now, this is a 1911 it's a very beat up one but the details are still there now next up we didn't mint these for very long we have the indian i mean not the indian head penny we have the um buffalo nickel and this is called a buffalo nickel because of the buffalo on the back we didn't mint these for very long we minted them from like the teens to the 30s I kind of like this design. We actually have a lot of Indian designs from about this time. On the penny, we have it on the uh, nickel. We had Indian designs on a few other coins, I think. But um, the Indian head penny is probably my favorite Indian design. We had them on gold coins. That's the other Indian design. There we go. <clears throat> now, these aren't, those aren't actually very valuable. Um nickels they're just five cents just in a, this now this is a very interesting nickel during the war we made these things called war nickels and you can tell it's a war nickel because on the back the mint mark is right there that s now the mint marks if i haven't already explained there are multiple mint marks over the years cc carson city o oregon i don't know we have a, a, a c for charlottesville S for San Francisco, P for Philadelphia, D for Denver, W for West Point, and there's a few other mints that I don't remember. This one is San Francisco minted. Now you can now these are special because they are made out of silver. This is about 45 cents in silver right here. Even though it's a nickel. So during the war we needed the nickel from these, so we made them out of silver. And that's a very interesting thing. And then after the war, and this is actually before the war, but after the war, we started making them out of normal coins again. And we kept this design basically until 2009, and then we changed it. So this is the same nickel all the way back. But we're not doing modern coins, we're doing old coins. That's about it with the nickels. Let's go to these quarters. Now, on quarters, first up, we have the barber dime. Now, this barber design is very... Uh, boring to me. I do not like this design. But not to mention the fact that they put them they put this barber design on the dime, the half dollar, and the quarter during this time. This is a very boring design that I really don't like. Quarter dollar, there's an eagle on the back. God we trust up there, 1901. Very boring. This is a much better quarter. This is the Standing Liberty Quarter. It's from 1929. You see there's Liberty standing up here. There are a few variations of this. For example, there's one where the eagle is much bigger and these three stars do, are not present. And then there's this one where the three stars are present and the eagle is a little bit smaller. This is a very beat up coin, but you can see Standing Liberty there. 
Now, we have two more quarters. These are not anything special, for, really. These are just made of silver. So, fun fact. This is a 1964 quarter. In fact, all quarters minted. All quarters, half dollars, dimes, and dollar coins minted before 1965 are made out of 90% silver. These two are 90% silver. They are worth about five bucks each. All right, I think that's a good time to move on to the half dollars. There's not really much to say about the quarters. Now, this is a, now this is just a barber half dollar. This one is minted at the San Francisco Mint. There's an S right there. 1911. I don't know the years we minted these because I'm not really interested in these barber ones. But it's the same design as this barber quarter, so there's not really much to see there. Now this is the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. This is from 1945. This is a much better coin. Now as you can see, there is no mint mark on this coin. And the reason for that is this is made at the Philadelphia Mint. If you ever find a quarter, I mean a penny, a dime, whatever, anything, and it does not have a mint mark, it is Philadelphia. If it has a P, it is also Philadelphia. This is a much better condition coin. I don't actually remember where I got this, but as you can see, it is amazing looking. With that big eagle on the back, half dollar. Zoom. 25, we're getting more modern. <coughs> now the half dollar actually had the most designs out of all of these coins, except the penny. Had these, the Benjamin Franklin half dollars from 1952. They had this eagle right here, um, this bell, turn it over, you have Benjamin Franklin, there's, it's cool. Now, 1964, there was only, you, you've probably seen this design, it's the Kennedy half. Now, there was only one 90% silver Kennedy half dollar, which is the 1964. And also in half dollars, we had this. Now, what you might think about this, this is, this is 1969. It's not 90% silver. You're right, it's not. But it is 40% silver. From 1965 to 1970, we made our half dollars and only our half dollars out of 40% silver. So this coin is worth less, but it is worth more than a half dollar. But that's really all to say about these half dollars because I don't really have much older. If I had a lot... Like on all these coins, if I had older varieties, I could say more, but I can't because I don't have older varieties. So I guess we'll move on to the dimes. Once again, another barber design. I hate these designs. They're garbage. Enough said. Now, it is time for my favorite coin, probably like second favorite coin the USA has ever minted. The Mercury Dime. These things are cool. They were minted from about 1915 or 16 to um, 1916 to 1945. So these things are minted for a while. The 1916D has like 21,000. That one's pretty rare. This one is not very rare. In the back there's this axe with some like some sort of like vine, and on the front. We have this mercury design. I don't actually know why it's called a mercury dime, but this is a very cool design. I love this design. And after that, we didn't have very many dime designs. After that, we had the Roosevelt dime. You've seen this design. This is a Denver mint with that D right there. It's 1946. But these guys, we they're minted all the way up to now. But they, these are made out of silver because it is made out of 40, it's uh, 1946, that's silver. You can see on the edge, see how that edge is completely white? If this was made out of not silver, you'd see a brown line in there. So it was made out of clad. But that's really all to say about the dimes. There's not really much to say about the dimes. I, once again, I'd have more to say if there was, if I had older coins, but there isn't much to say about them. Now, next up we have the dollars. Now, the dollars are interesting because... Now that we have the dollars, these cuts are part of the case, not the thing. Now that we have the dollars, we actually have the ability to talk about paper currency. Now, this is a Morgan dollar, 
These were minted from the 1800s up to like the 1900s. I don't remember what year specifically. There's an O mint mark right there. I don't actually know what the O meant. I think it's Oregon or something. I don't actually remember what it was. I never did research on that. But there are there is a, a mint mark CC on the back right here. If it was if that was a CC mint mark, this would be a very, very valuable coin. But these things are worth about 20 bucks in silver alone. These things are awesome. I love this design. After the Morgan design, we had the piece design. <clears throat> it says piece right there. Now, I actually have a lot to say about this coin. This coin was meant was minted and made in commemoration of ending World War I. It was meant to symbolize peace. As you can see, the eagle is not a, an attack position or spread out. It is calmly sat on top of a rock that says peace to commemorate peace after World War I, which didn't last very long because of World War II, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Now, a lot of people have a lot of problems with these coins, specifically because of their weak strike. They have a very, very weak strike, which makes them almost impossible to find in very good condition. I actually have a few of these, as in this is a San Francisco minted. See, this is a very weak strike. As I'm running across, I can barely feel that there's even a design on the coin, which you can with a lot of other coins. But that's a very cool. Now, this one is not silver or even really that interesting, but this is an Eisenhower dollar. This is our last large dollar, large dollar, because there are smaller dollar coins, but I don't actually have any to show you today. See, there is this one. This is Eisenhower. It has Eisenhower on the front, and it has Earth and an eagle on the moon. These were minted, I think, to commemorate the moon landing. That's that. Now, this is interesting. This is a silver certificate. Now, you can see the difference from this dollar versus a regular dollar. There's a green strike right here. These are blue. It says silver certificate. One dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. So you could basically go to the bank and demand they give you some of these silver coins for this dollar. They were made differently. Now, this one is actually a very good condition dollar. This thing is crisp. It looks like fresh off the press. Like, look at that thing. Ah, oh, beautiful. But yeah, these are really cool, but I think it's time to go into more cooler coins. Now, you might be thinking, Saturnid, what are these? Well, I'll tell you what these are. These are ancient coins. And see, this one is it's, that's the year it's suspected to be from on this one, too. On this one, you can actually read some of the history. Coincided with Constantine's Silver Jubilee, 25th year of reign. A helmeted bus person flying. The new city, Constantinopolis, is the new is the, on the obverse. Obverse just means the front of the coin. Reverse is the back of the coin. A figure is wing of winged victory standing on the prow of a ship is on the reverse. So this is the front of the coin. The back. These things are really cool. I sadly don't know much about them because I do not know much about ancient coins, but these things are really cool and I can actually touch this one. As you can tell, they're just like such badly made. But that, that that's what makes them cool because of how badly made they are to be ancient. But that's really all I have to say about ancient coins because I don't have many of them and I don't know much about them. But yeah, these are pretty dang old. They cost a little bit of money. But yeah, let's go into some smaller types of coins, but still worth mentioning. Now, in these types of coins, we have our toned coins and our commemorative coins. Now, toned coin basically just means um, that it has, like, this rainbow, like, not damage, but just, like, color to it. It does not mean that it is a damaged coin. It's just toned. That's just what that means. And we have our commemorative coins. Peace and friendship. 
I actually don't know what these are commemorative, but you can get commemorative half dollars, you can get commemorative dollar coins, commemorative anything, really. These things are cool. Now, if you're more interested in these coins than you were before, and you want to start a collection, I can tell you the perfect way to start that collection. Now, if your goal is to collect these coins, then I can show you a good way to do that. These are called coin folders. What you can do with them, here's Mercury Dines, and there's about Indian heads, silver dollars. Do with them is that they come in these little things, you just open them up. See all the things that I've collected? Comes with all the years. It tells you how many were made. And it tells you the year that it's from. I haven't collected too many. But these are very good ways to do a collection. I have quite a few of them. These are very old books, but the, I have them. These are much newer versions of the same brand. Some silver dollars. This is just a this is just a uh, basic folder. Here's my two peace dollars, and here's my two Eisenhowers. This one, I actually forgot to tell you what kind of it was, but this is a proof. This means it has this, like, mirror finish design. It's much shinier than this one. It's called a proof. So if you ever find one, they're usually made at the uh, San Francisco Mint. Actually, nowadays, they are only made at the San Francisco Mint, but uh, that's besides the point. Here's my Mercury Dimes. This collection would have been much more full, but I haven't really been on the grind. I just recently got back into coins after being off it for a while, which is why this big channel update happened. I realized there was some video content there, and I just got back into the groove. Now, um, those are just folders, but you can get albums, and here's one of my favorites. This is a Dansko album. Now, these are out of print, so they cost a little bit of money. Like this, for example, cost me 40 bucks without the coins. But Whitman, which is the company, makes their own albums, and they are still in print, and so they cost less money. Um, so, gives you some information on them. If you're wondering what these K's are for, it's, uh, it means key date. It refers to coins that are very rare. For example... Uh, the uh, 19, the 1931 S had that many minted versus, you know, billions. So that is a key date. There isn't very many of them. Now this goes from 1909 to 2009. So there's a hundred years of coins. I have a few key dates myself being this one, this one, this one. I have the 1926S, I have the 31D, not the 31S, I have the 33D, I have all three steel cents, this page is almost full, I only need one more penny to make this a full page, I have a lot of these older coins, This starts up the Lincoln Memorial sense rather than the wheat pennies. This is a memorial. means that there's this memorial in the back. Now these are proofs again. As I said, this, the San Francisco Mint makes these. They're much shinier. The S. And then these are the 2009 cents. Now, the 2009 cents are actually kind of cool because they had different designs on them. Instead of the memorial, they had this design, this design, this design, and this design. This is his early life. This is, um, this is before presidency. This is 
during presidency, and this is building of the Capitol building right here. I think so, at least. Yeah. So they made four of them because in 2009, there was actually a coin shortage. So all 2009 coins, I th I'm pretty sure all 2009s have special designs on them for that. If I could check here. So, like, there's a 2006 D, 3 billion. 3 billion. But then you go down to the 2009s and there's only 100 million. There was a massive shortage that year. But, you know, that's pretty much all I have to say for this video. This is our first coin video, and I'll come back for our, our first coin hunting video. I just thought that this would be a nice starter to the coin side of my channel by starting up some history on them so you know what we're talking about when we find our coins. So if I pull out a mercury dime, you know what that is because you saw it in this video. So I guess that's all for this time, guys. See you in the next video.